So when we talk about growth, development, and unfoldment, of course we know that there's more than four stages of spiritual growth and development. But just for the sake of, of clarity, you know, I just created these four stages many years ago. And they came into being when I, w I was teaching at a, uh, a school of ministry. And one of the students asked a question. They said, we're trying to understand something. There seems to be some contradiction in, in the teaching or in the book. On one level, you say, you know, that one level the teaching says, you know, you can open up your mind and, and you can have it all. On another level, it says, uh, surrender, surrender your life to the presence. And it seems to be a contradiction. At that moment, I went up to the blackboard and I said, uh, there are four stages in spiritual growth development and unfoldment. They don't contradict each other, uh, but we have a tendency to unfold through these four stages and each stage embraces the stage before. Now, before I went up to the blackboard, I didn't know I was gonna say any of this. And so this, they just kind of emerged back in 1980-something. I don't remember. I started Agape in 1986. This was probably 1984. And they've been uh, uh, distilled ever since. So when we talk about the four stages, we talk about one to us. The universe is doing something to us. That's uh, the victim stage. We talk about by us with our minds. That's the manifester stage. We talk about through us, which is the stage of the vehicle or the channel. And we talk about the stage of as us, which is the stage of being. And so it's to us, by us, through us, and as us. Those are four stages. And we can, everyone already in this room knows that many people in the world are living in stage one. And that is they feel victimized by the world of circumstances, situations, people, places, things, conditions, uh, uh, depending on where they are in, 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 in the arc of the spiral dynamics. They either think uh, God is doing something to them or the devil. If they've gone to college, they think it's their parents. You know, <laughs> depends on where they are at that arc. But they're victimized by something outside of themselves, or so they think, that is determining their destiny. And so when you talk to someone in that stage, and if you ask them, why aren't they happy? Why aren't they more healthy? Why aren't they more successful? And they can have a list of things, and there's a blaming someone else or something that happened in their life that's determining their destiny, determining their joy and their happiness. And that's stage one. And then stage two, what enters into the domain are spiritual principles, universal principles. And we begin to, to learn, of course, uh, that uh, uh, we have thoughts, and those thoughts have a tendency to manifest. They have a tendency to transmute themselves as perception, as uh, experience. And we begin to, to, to be aware of the metaphysical arena in which you can begin to use spiritual laws uh, to heal yourself. You can begin to use spiritual laws to stabilize the structures in your life, meaning your physical body, your mental body, your emotional body, your financial body, your relationship body, stabilizing these structures. That's a whole other teaching. We don't have a lot, a lot of time for, for all of that. But, but, in, but in stage two, we begin to learn, of course, that about oneness we begin to learn that there's nothing outside the infinite we begin to learn that this presence by whatever mean we choose to call it never compromises nor contradicts its own nature it always works on its own behalf we begin to learn that this presence all of nature the cosmos is working for our spiritual liberation that it may loose its own energy through us that it may become conscious of itself as our life so we learn all of this in stage two and, and if you've seen the movie The Secret, you know that was a stage two movie, meaning uh, that they were teaching, uh, we were teaching from the level of manifestation. Stage two is how to manifest with your mind, with setting your intention. If you can see it and believe it, you can bring it into expression. That's stage two. And then there's stage three. Stage three is when on a subjective level, you begin to be so aware and that this presence is for you and they're not against you. There's a yielding that takes place, a surrender, a letting go, an allowing. You're no longer trying to make anything happen. Stage two is I'm going to make it happen. Stage three is I'm going to make it welcome. It's already happening somewhere in the mind of God. It's already happening in the universal presence. I'm going to make it welcome. Stage two, I'm going to make it happen through might, through power, through visualization. I'm going to bring it into manifestation. And we don't put down stage two. We need stage two in order to develop and learn a certain universal spiritual principles. And then as that begins to evolve within us, we enter into a more of a deeper surrender, a releasing, an allowing. 
we know as I in just indicated we're not making it happen we're making it welcome just as uh, the, ac the, oak the oak tree is already within the acorn you know you don't make the oak tree happen by placing it in its right condition you're making the oak tree welcome you're allowing that which is intrinsically involved within that acorn to emerge as an oak tree. So there's, there's something about us, as uh, Mark was indicating earlier in terms of our unique self, there's something about us uh, that's irreducible, something about us uh, that's undeniable, that's real, that's unique, as, a, as an emanation of the infinite that we didn't make happen. But at, under the right condition, we allow it to unfold. We, we, we make it welcome. So in stage two, we would say, you know, if you could see it, you, and if you can believe it, you can make it happen. In stage three, we would say, eyes have not seen nor ears heard, nor has entered into the heart of man and woman, that which the Father, Mother God has in store for those who love the presence. I'm just doing a little rift on scripture. So, you know, it's beyond, our, it's beyond the imaginal realm. You can't imagine it. You can't visualize it. It's beyond, it's beyond your present paradigm. It's beyond your present point of view. You're yielding to something, and that yielding is based upon a deeper awareness that this universe is friendly and never working against you. So with every insight that you have in stage two, doing your metaphysical work, there's a greater ability to let go and to let love. Let go and let beauty, and let go and let joy, let go and let God. And then there's stage four, which is as us. And that is a state of being where we come to a great awareness incrementally or dramatically or it lasts for a period of time in which we have the realization that our life really is the life of God. That there's no separation, there's no distance, there's no otherness, there's no other place, no other power, no other space, no other time. It, it, we might have it as an, in a moment of insight when we become extemporal beings, we become out of time and that awareness takes over our life and we, we, we learn how to stabilize that state by going back to metaphysical principles and certain practices that have crept into our life through our spiritual practice. Are you following what I'm saying? You getting it? Okay. It's a very brief introduction. Now, in order to move through the stages, and of course it's non, it's non-linear, you bounce back and forth, you bounce back and forth in different areas of your life. In one area of your life, you may be totally surrendered. Another area of your life, you may be working it out with your mind visualizing and seeing what you want until you can yield to something greater than your imagination and so in in order to move from stage one to stage two move from being a victim to learning how to manifest it, with every stage you have to give up something all spiritual growth development and unfoldment 100 percent is the giving up of something not the attainment of anything because you already are so what you're doing is you're releasing that which is inhibiting you from right seeing inhibiting you from right being inhibiting you from being your real authentic self and so all spiritual growth is letting go you can't gain anything because you already have it but you're releasing the blockages of that which would hinder your real nature from expressing so to move from a victim I normally in a workshop or something, I would have you shout out what you think you have to let go of, but we're not going to do that. We just, I'm just going to roll through this, okay? So to move from victimhood into manifestation, the victim has to give up blame, which is why forgiveness is a deep uh, uh, a spiritual practice in every spiritual path. You have to give up your blame story. Somebody else's fault that I am in the situation that I'm in today doesn't let people off the hook for saying bad things about you or doing bad things to you but you're letting go of the resentment and the rancor uh, the hate the unforgiveness so that you're not hindering your own flow because those thought forms of rancor or resentment uh, are are creating bile and are creating toxic chemicals moving through the body temple blocking you create creative flow inhibiting inhibiting your immune system so you, so all forgiveness is self-forgiveness so the, the the victim coming out of victim stage is giving up blame giving up blame and shame and then they begin to move into the manifestation realm 
we begin to practice manifestation. We begin to uh, use our imagination to see the kind of life we want to see, to want to live in. We begin to embrace it emotionally. We begin to, to hold the space every single day where we're feeling that that's real and that's happening. And then the universal law of mind and action wraps itself around that vibration and frequency. And we notice that manifestation of things that we're holding in mind are beginning to come into manifestation. We notice that things we were holding in mind before, based on fear, doubt, and worry, they were also coming into manifestation. Because the law doesn't care what you want, it only cares what you're interested in. And so if you're, if you're interested in what you don't want, it's going to give you the, what you don't want. If you're interested in what you do want and you have that vibration around it, manifestation occurs. That's stage two. In order to move from stage two to stage three, you're giving up control. You're giving up control. Now, it, it's, it's not something you wake up one day and say, I'm going to give up control. It's, it's incremental through spiritual practice. So your spiritual practice of affirmative prayer, of meditation, of, of, of breath work, of uh, whatever practices you find yourself in, little by little by little, you have insights. And an insight is an event that takes place in consciousness where you suddenly or incrementally begin to know something that you only believed. It was a theory. It was a hypothesis. It was something you memorized. But when you have an insight, you become extemporal. That which is eternal becomes real within you. You're out of time because everything that is real, love, peace, joy, wisdom, harmony, they are timeless. And so when you have an insight around the nature of reality, you become uh, temporarily timeless you have a, and it, you have an insight and you notice as you move back into your life with the eternal in your step you have you're yielding more you're releasing more you're surrendering more you you're giving up more control because you have a greater awareness that everything really is working together for your good because there's nothing outside of this presence of life and of love and of beauty that has recreated itself after its own image and its own likeness and named itself you sitting in those underwear that you have on right now except for the two people over there they don't have any on but they didn't think i could see that but i can anyway i shouldn't say these kind of things anyway so moving from stage two to stage three you're giving up control incrementally through spiritual practice every aha every insight every moment of wonder Oh, I'm so connected. Oh, my God. And there's a, oh, phew, I'm loved. Oh, there's a releasing. And then to move from stage two to stage three, uh, you're giving up. Again, this is not just waking up. You can't just do that. It's a, it's a practice that yields insight. You're, you're, you slowly are letting go of a personal sense of a separation uh, from the presence of God, love, love beauty, joy, whatever name you want to use to call this universal presence that's everywhere. The personal sense of separation begins to dissolve. And you notice your own personal sense of separation when you move into meditation, you move into prayer. You might notice that you're still praying and, 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 a, and a great deal of your energy is like going outward. You're like praying out there to God out there. And there's like this deep chasm, this sense of separation between you and God, you see. And as we evolve, that separation begins to dissolve and we realize that our interiority, our inner awareness of this light and love and the beauty that is us, this is the presence of God. And so the, the innermost God and the outermost God is the same God, but our energy isn't thrust externally. It's more internal, having a realization of our oneness with this presence and that personal sense of separation begins to dissolve and we find ourselves more and more and more uh, in states of being. When, when Mark was talking uh, earlier in the day about um, waking up, you know, the, and everyone has had, and I came up later and asked about everyone who's had those kind of experiences and every, pretty much everybody raised their hand. And in, and in that moment when you have that, that awareness where you're suddenly in love with everyone, you know, suddenly you're in love with all of nature and the filter, filter is gone you know, you've had, a, you've had a moment where you're aware that you're at one with life, beauty, love, with everyone. There's no separation whatsoever. You just, you know, I can remember myself up in, up in Sonoma one, one afternoon, and I, I fell in love. I was sitting on the creek meditating, and all of a sudden the filters dropped, and I was in love with this tree. 
I mean, I mean, really, I was quite embarrassed by my feelings for this tree. <laughs> and uh, I got up and hugged it and kissed it, and I took off my clothes and sat in the grass, and I was just like, oh my God, what's going on? Then I was in, I was in love with the grass, then I was in love with the dirt, you know, and I was just glad no one else was there because I would have been in love with them too, and who knows what would have happened. But anyway, we've all had those kind of moments. And then a dimension of our spiritual work after that, of course, is to stabilize uh, stabilize those those expanded awareness because we don't come uh, uh, to a conference like this to get high we come to get free not just to get high but to get free and to stabilize the insights that we're having collectively as a community where everyone's having an insight with every speaker with every exercise you're making yourself prone to an insight and then our role is to stabilize uh, that insight so it wasn't just a weekend high it's absolutely a shift has occurred in our per windows of perception and we ground that in right action and our willingness and some of the things I, you see you writing on the blackboard about back there of what you're going to do when you leave here we begin to ground that awareness so let me get into where visioning fits stage two manifestation stage that's where visualization is so we hear uh, that's a very powerful, as everyone in this room knows, strong beginning metaphysical tool, you know, uh, where you, you, you but it is, it is a stage two tool because you're actually imagining the kind of life you want to live. You're imagining, you're, you're, you're seeing it, you know, uh, you're, you're feeling it, you're using the imaginal realm for a very positive and life affirming uh, uh, thing. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful stage. And then visioning is in stage three. For envisioning, you're not telling the law what you want. You're asking what's trying to emerge. So it's a different focus. Stage two, you're saying what I want. Stage three, you're saying this is what I want to be. It's a different vibration. You follow that? So stage two is like, I, I, I'm, I see myself on the beach with a nice house. My body's healthy. You know, I'm walking with someone I love. You're, you're seeing it in your mind's eye, and you're, you, 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 you create a, a, a vibratory field to help bring that or something better into your life. Stage three, you, you, you're, you're dealing with it totally differently. You're actually, you're actually putting yourself in a position to ask questions knowing that the universal presence, the universe answers every question that you ask. Every, if, you're, if, you're, if you're in a state of spiritual inquiry, that's a very beautiful place to be because the questions are always being asked. The difficulty with people who are in the victim stage is they ask disempowering questions. They ask, why me? What's wrong? Who's to blame? They operate at that level and the universe answers it because you're an idiot. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> but you ask that kind of question. <laughs> you're saying, no, he isn't. <laughs> But you ask a question, then the, in which you incur, which you, you open yourself up to is the database of human consciousness that has all kinds of s s sense of separation. And you begin to get all, wh why is this happening again? Who's to blame? You get all kinds of, uh, uh, of manner of information that become ultimately your excuses to keep you at that particular stage. And so as we grow and unfold, we don't ask disempowering questions. What's wrong? Who's to blame? Why me? We ask a different kind of question and make ourselves available to receive that answer. So I'm gonna, we're going to go through a vision process, and the questions that we're going to use are, you know, what is, what, is the, what is the universe's idea of my life as success? You know, what, what does that look like? And then we're going to ask, what must I become? in order to embody that idea or that vision. We can't have anything that we're not willing to become in consciousness. It's an impossibility. You can manipulate and be clever to get certain things in life through mental might and power and cleverness, but you have to fight and claw to keep it until you own it in consciousness, until you become one with it. So we ask the question, what must I become in order for this uh, to, to, to manifest in my life? And then we ask, what gifts do I already have that can be in service to this vision? In other words, sometimes we take certain parts of ourselves for granted. We're, we're, we, we, we don't, we, we're not aware of certain gifts we have. We just are unaware that these gifts can be in service to this grand vision that's seeking to emerge through us. 
You follow? And then we ask, what no longer serves me? What is it that I can now let go of that no longer serves me unfolding and evolving until my, into my real self and the manifestation of this vision that I'm now learning to articulate? And then we tap into the vibration of willingness because we have to give our self consent as a, as, a, as a spiritual being having a human incarnation, being made in the image and likeness of God. And oftentimes uh, people think that that means you look like God, even though God is formless, so you can't look like God. Spiritual image and likeness of God means that you share the faculty of reflective consciousness, which means you can think about what you think about. You can think independent of any circumstance, any situation, and you begin to set new causative factors in your life. Okay? So uh, we begin to... Um, uh, 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 participate in our own growth by saying yes, by being willing, by inviting growth to happen in our life. We're not here to be enthralled, but we're here to be involved in a very powerful way by participating in our own unfolding and our own evolution. So you have to say yes. It's not just going to just happen. You know, you're not going to be pulled along on the, the, the slow wheels of evolution. You have to participate and, and, and embrace that which is within you and give it permission to emerge. That's what you have the possibility and the potential and the capacity to do as the image and likeness of God. Are you following what I'm saying? Give me a yes, give me a no, whatever. Okay, very good. So what, what time is it? How much time do I have, Mark? Five minutes? Okay, it's going to be a very quick visioning. I'm going to speak like this for the rest of the time. Okay, no, really. We can do this very quickly. Everyone put your feet on the ground. Relax yourself. You don't have to have anything in your hands right now if you want. We're going to give you a taste. Take a deep breath and allow yourself to relax into this moment and have no concern about where you have come from or where you're going. You have arrived at this spot, this place, in which you're surrounded by a field of unconditional and all conditional love. A field that has been co-created from the beginning of this Success 3.0 conference. Is surrounded by individuals who have said yes to being here. So they're interested in success. Success with a large S, not the small S success that society says, but the large S success that has something to do with the unfolding of your soul, something to do with your unique self, something to do with you delivering your gifts, activating the powers within you for this time in human history and beyond. So with this quietude, we ask a question and we listen with our inner ear and the ear behind the ear as if someone was telling you the most important secret in the world. We, our whole being, uh, uh, listening is not passive, it's not active. Listening is what I call a reverential alertness. You're available. And so in your awareness, ask, what is the universe's idea of my life in the vibration of success? What does it look like? What does it feel like? What does it sound like? What's its energy? You can say, what does, how does the universe think of me in the vibration of success? How does God see itself as my life in this vibration of real meaningful success? What does that look like? So you may be available to an image, a feeling tone, a vibration, a sign, an instant knowing of something. But just hang with this for a few seconds. Deep listening. What idea is seeking to emerge through me that embraces the new success? What is it? I'm listening. And as we're beginning to feel into that, as it's articulating itself through us, we ask, what must I become in order for this to manifest? And we get inner guidance. 
in a language in a way that we can understand. What must I become? We continue. What do I already have in my house that can be in service to the idea of my life as success? What gifts do I already have? What must I let go of? What no longer serves me? And finally, if you've ever said yes to anything in your life, you know that vibration. Magnify the vibration of yes. Magnify the, vi the vibration of willingness. Become willing to be that spiritual vision of success. Be willing to be it. You don't have to know how to do it right now. You have to be willing. Where there is willfulness, there's a wall. Where there's willingness, there's a way. Tap into willingness right now. And as we wrap up this portion of the evening, feel into this. As you're standing in the vibration of the idea of success in your life right now, what it looks like and feels like, and your willingness. I evoke this presence, this power, this love, this joy that is everywhere in its fullness and that by means of us seeks to express itself. And I speak the word for the each and every being that is here, knowing that anything heretofore that would have blocked, hindered, delayed, or obstructed the fullness of their life is now dissolved into the nothingness from which it has come never to exist again. And these beings stand in freedom, freedom to be the next stage of their evolution. I feel it in my bones. I give thanks for this and I let it be. So be it. Amen. And so as you slowly open your eyes, that was a very, very brief intro into the teaching, a brief ex exercise into life visioning, but I felt something drop in for you. And so the sign says, please wrap up. So let's all wrap ourselves up. <laughs> Love ourselves. Thank you very much. <laughs>